for some areas of the country, this could be the coldest weather in a generation. For us, it's not as bad, but it's still really cold and in some cases can be very dangerous. Elise Finch is here and is going to explain a little bit more. So we're in winter. We expect we it to are. be cold. Why is this so notably different? Well, it's one of the terms that we keep talking about, which is the polar vortex. People keep mentioning it, but I want to go ahead and explain what that is. It is part of the reason that we're seeing such incredibly cold air. So let's go ahead and take this graphic full because what you're seeing is this area of low pressure, right? This is the polar vortex. You can see it spreading south, spreading that cold air. That is one of the reasons why we are seeing such dangerously cold conditions, especially uh, in the Midwest, but also we are going to see some cold conditions here as well. The polar vortex itself is just a core of polar air. Typically, it resides near Canada, right? Near Hudson Bay. That's typically where you find it, but every so often it does sag south, and when it does, it produces a bitter blast of polar air wherever it travels. So that's what we're experiencing right now. That's what we're seeing is that cold air sagging to the south. The other thing we're seeing today that makes our weather so interesting is this. This is your satellite and radar, but you can see here, it doesn't look like much, right? It looks like just a little tiny line of snow. This is a snow squall, and this is what we're expecting to move through the area this afternoon. So we turn on your future cast. This is noon. You can see it's still back into Pennsylvania. Approaches our area right around about 1 32 o'clock this afternoon and enters our western suburbs. It continues to move quickly. 3 30 in the afternoon, we're expecting it to be right over New York City. As we continue on to 5 p.m., Twin Forks of Long Island, and then by 7, this system is out of here. It is a quick mover. That's one of the definitions of a snow squall. What it is is just a burst of snow. Looks like a little front, a burst of snow. Gusty winds is also a hallmark of a, of a snow squall. Low visibility and typically it lasts less than 30 minutes. So it's a quick moving system. It'll be over your area, maybe 30 minutes, burst of snow. The problem is it makes it very difficult to see. It doesn't drop a lot of snow, so we're not expecting a big snow event out of this system, but it is a front of sorts. And what it will do is produce some really cold air, even colder on the backside. So at this afternoon, as you move around the tri-state area, a number of locations will be in the upper 20s. That includes New York City. Some of the warmer locations will be in the low 30s, but again, when you factor in the winds, it won't feel like that for anybody. And the winds do become a significant issue. Wind advisories go into effect at 1 o'clock this afternoon, remain in effect until 7, and that's for most of the tri-state area. We could see winds up to 50 miles per hour. Another alert that we don't see all the time, but we have seen already twice this season, wind chill alerts. Most of the area you can see here under a wind chill advisory, that's from 7 p.m. today until 10 a.m. tomorrow. That's because the air temp, the air mass, that frigid air mass that we have in place, Back, uh, coupled with the winds will make it feel like it's between 15 and 25 below zero. So that's why we have the wind chill advisory two counties, Sullivan, Ulster, a wind chill warning where it will be between 30 and 35 degrees below zero. That's what it will feel like. Take a look at your seven day. It shows that we just dump into the freezer here. We've plunged into it today. Technically, our high temperature today will end up being something like 34, 35 degrees, but we hit that at midnight. So if you weren't awake and outside at midnight, you missed it. 28 is the walking hmm. around temperature this afternoon. But when you factor in the winds feeling much colder tomorrow, colder still 15 degrees. And when you factor in those winds again, feeling like zero, 10 below. Friday, we still are frigid, 24 degrees, feeling much colder, could see some snowflakes to the south of the city. Saturday's the transition day. It's sunny, we get some relief, temperatures at or slightly above uh, freezing. And then on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, temperatures start to climb, we get back into the mid 40s, should be a really nice day. And you can see the beginning of uh, the work week next week brings us temperatures upper 40s, even to about 50 degrees. So we do get sort of a, a prize, if you will, but we still have to get through the frigid air today and of course that snow squall that we talked about. Can we talk more a little bit about yeah. that? You mentioned not a lot of snow but what right. does that mean? So we get maybe less than an inch is what we're expecting out of the system so less than an inch of snow but the problem is it creates this blind or has the potential to create blinding conditions meaning reduced visibility a lot of people will be like oh my gosh it's a blizzard it's not a blizzard because it doesn't last long enough a blizzard has to last a certain amount of time but this can create that same sort of whiteout effect you can't see you don't know if the snow is falling or just blowing side to side, that's a possibility with this system that moves through this afternoon. Is this bitter blast with the polar vortex like indicative of what we can expect for the rest of the season or is this kind of a one and done? Not necessarily. Uh -huh. Hard to say. I don't want to get into long range forecasts because I feel like in the past few years they've all gone out the window. Things are changing. So we are experiencing some weather in these past few years that we haven't typically seen. So I don't want to go that far, okay. but I will say it does happen from time to time. We have seen it in past years. We're seeing it again right now. But and, we can uh, talk about snow totals for this season. We
we can. We're below, right? We are. I mean, we are several inches below where we should be, about three or four inches below where we should be, and wildly behind what we were last year. At this time, we were 18 inches roughly wow. this time last year, and we're a little over seven right now. So. As far as snow, we could technically use some. I don't know if everybody's rooting for it, but it's a possibility. We won't get it with this system. The well, more of the season to come. So we'll find out sooner rather than later. You're right, we will. All right, Elise, thank you. Okay.